Good afternoon. Thank you so kind with Tool for Forza. And after a very, very interesting week one with this uh, Porsche Macan at Road Atlanta, I, I think we, we, we definitely learned um, that that these these uh, Porsches can take quite a little bit of con, uh, contact uh, and because a lot of contact was dealt out during the race. Uh, elbows were definitely out. But but again, Road America, or not Road America, Road Atlanta, uh, again, very momentum-based track and uh, track and, and very easy uh, that kind of stuff to happen. Um, not going to say Yas is going to be any better or worse, but I think uh, for the two two tracks here for week two at Yas Marina, um, it's not not quite as smooth momentum track that, that Road Atlanta was for, for either layout of Road Atlanta. Um, but this one does have a lot of technical bits. Uh, both layouts actually have a bit of technical bits to it. And, and I think those are going to prompt, there, there's going to be definitely some contact there. Though hopefully, you know, because it is a bit more technical, a little slower speed in some of those areas that uh, the rubbing there will be, you know, what I would call incidental. It, you know, it, nobody should really get taken out by it. But anyhow, um, so what I'm going to do is I, I'm still on, and you know, again, I'm still trying to figure out getting the streaming set up on the on the Series X. So I want to do the Series X here uh, for the first circuit, I think, for uh, for next Thursday, which will be Yas Marina, the South Circuit. I'm doing it in the daytime because I think uh, I think the way Matt's going to do this one, since since the North Corkscrew is at night, this will probably be in day, uh, especially since he didn't specify it uh on the spreadsheet so i'm actually going to run a session here uh at at the south circuit kind of like what i typically normally do i'll probably end the stream at that point take a small break uh and then i'll come back and i'll do the uh the north corkscrew a little bit later uh, kind of back to the old school instead of having one huge long stream uh i'd rather just break it up into two smaller ones kind of like what you've been used to getting uh, when we were doing one circuit per week so okay, with that, let's let's see what this uh, what this what this Porsche does here uh, at Yas Marina. Let's go ahead and do a test drive. Uh, I'm gonna run, probably just gonna run an out lap real quick, uh, and then I'll do a slower lap and just kind of talk about things I'm looking at, uh, what what the, what the Porsche tends to do, what it likes, what it doesn't like, at least for me. I'll probably do a flyer just so I get a better look at that turn one again. That would have been a time penalty. Do one flying lap here, and then we'll start doing the slow one. That would have been a time penalty. I just want to try this line for a because of yeah. Okay. Okay, so coming down the front straight here, fourth gear, um, 
the breaking point uh again breaking line's pretty good you don't what i'm finding with yas and this is especially true it'll be on the on the the north corkscrew there there are times where you know we always talk about how the breaking line is kind of more guideline than rule um so and depending on the car and like that you can break can go into the red a little break a bit before you hit the brakes and can still make the corner um yas isn't like that uh it's it's kind of it's kind of like Horizon Five in that sense, where if you're not on the brakes by the time you're getting to the red, um, you're probably not going to make the corner, um, and that's kind of that's what I've been finding, especially on on the heavy braking off the, off the long straights. So braking lane is pretty pretty good here as a reference. If you can't tell where it's at because you're close behind somebody, usually it's right about you know for me I'm going to start braking right about where that Yas Marina sign on the left side uh, goes out of my field of view. So when that goes off on the left side, usually I'll be braking right about here. So it's it's kind of just just past the 150 mark. You know, I, I think that 150 mark is a little early. So it's it's just as you get past the 150, but just as you're getting you know up to that Yas Marina sign. So it might be, I, I wouldn't say it's halfway between the 150 and the 100. It's maybe about a you know, a third of the way, uh, if we're going to get specific. But, um, so again, again, the 150 is probably a little too early. Where the Yas sign is that's going out, that's probably, at least for me, that's what I'm working with. And, and again, you know, I'm on a controller. I know most of you guys are on a wheel. Um, I'm running the 200 brake pressure tune. So with that, let's go ahead and slide up here. So for me, second gear corner, um, and this one typically, it's it, my habit is I usually overcook the entry a bit. Um, I don't have a specific place that I release the brakes, but it's just kind of when I, again, I kind of do it by feel. Have I have I slowed the, the 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 car enough to release the brakes to allow this Porsche to turn in? Because uh, again, it's like you're on the threshold braking; it's not going to want to turn all that easily. Um, so what you probably saw in the outlaps is these inside curves. You can can launch you can you can use a bit of the curves here with the porsche uh, again i think just the thing to watch out for is you know if they've got that orange uh the orange bump there in the middle it, it will you saw in a couple of the outlaps it will kind of pitch a wheel off the ground um as you're getting past the apex um the nice thing about the the porsche is you know it's big heavy it, it's got the suspension travel to eat a lot of that shock um, in a lot of cases, when you hit it, you're going to be rolling back into the throttle anyway. And with the all-wheel drive, if the back starts to, to step out, you just got to roll into the throttle. The, the, the all-wheel drive in the front, on the fronts there will kind of pull the car, pull the Porsche straight. So you, you can probably get away with using a bit more curb with this Porsche than, say, we did with the, with the Cayman GT4 or, or even like the Radical that basically would be scared to death of the bumps. So through here, second gear, uh, again on the controller, usually what I'm doing is, because with a controller, I don't have as precise control over how quickly the car turn, the wheels turn, or or how far they turn. A lot of cases, in a, as I'm committing into the corner, I'm actually using the throttle to kind of make up for that. Um, so what you'll see me doing is, as I'm turning in here, it's like as I'm getting in here, you'll see me goose off the throttle, and then that'll give a little more grip to the front, and, they'll, and, the, and the Porsche will rotate. A little more at the apex you know I might roll back in a little bit and then i'll let off on turn in to kind of again put a little more weight in the front allow the porsche to turn in but you can use a bit of curbing curbing there and again if the back kicks off you know if you if the left rear like on the on the curbing i just went over if the left rear comes off the ground i'm already rolling back into the throttle it's just the porsche is going to just straighten right back out so bring it out to here. I can't remember even from my outlaps for just a couple minutes ago. I can't remember if I'm getting up to third here. I don't think so. But my braking for here is I'm kind of with the braking line. I'm kind of also, if you look here, where you've got a kind of the, the green astro turf, where it ends and that white stripe begins on the, on the inside of the curb, that's a good reference point if you can't see the braking line. If you got to like, hey, where should I brake for this next one? Just know as you pass, as that green goes out of view, as you're reaching about here, you're probably going to want to brake about here. And again, it's a quick, and so I think it's second gear, it's a quick brush of the brake just to slow the Porsche down. Release, release right about, right about here. Um, and again, you know, 
when you get in rhythm, this will be easy. But it kind of lines up with the with the light pole that's kind of you can see, kind of see clipping through the middle of the rearview mirror. I mean, you'll quick break release. I like. I think this is where I differ from the the the, the suggested line. I actually will be a bit straighter. I'll turn in later, and so that I get a, a, a you know I'll do a, a slightly later apex you know than than what the line suggests to get a better run out. The the risk of that is again if you're in close traffic, I'm leaving the door open a little bit more for somebody behind me. But you know risk versus reward. If somebody sticks their nose in there, that's fine. I should still be able to maybe carry good momentum out on the right side, provided they don't try to push me. You know, if they stick their nose in there, they think they've got the right to the exit. And it's like, you know, cooperate a little bit through here, guys. I, I think that will uh, make the racing a bit better. So, again, you can use a bit of curb here. Roll back into the throttle. Second gear. Third gear. Um, one of the things I've learned in the, in my test laps, especially this section, I'm going to slow it up here a little bit. I don't, I, I think in other cars, sometimes you have the tendency, you let's, hey, let's go out and, and use the curbing on the left side and use as much of the road as possible. Again, the, the, the McCann, you, because SUV, because, you know, you have heavier suspension, you would think it can take the bumps here. I actually would recommend staying off this curbing altogether. It, it doesn't, kind of one of those, it doesn't upset the, the Macan too much, but it does upset it. it. It's like, you'll feel it as you get on it. And my, my thought is, I don't know that at this point in the track for the speed you're carrying, that it's that much of an advantage to try and open this next kink up. It, you can take it flat out, staying on the road uh, here. Just give yourself a little bit of room. So you saw, I, I'm, you can be flat through here bring it out, and then this next corner, you will not be able to take flat. I mean, you'll see it on the braking line um, where it's going to be red all the way through there. So you are going to have to lift. This is one of those where, you know, when you're turning, when you turn in, you're going to lift with the throttle and you can kind of balance with the throttle through there. Control users, you kind of saw what I was doing. Um, in, in fourth, it's harder to do. If you get a bad if you get a bad run out of the previous corner and you're in third at this point and you're on a controller, um, if you're if you're on third and you lift, um, because you're in a higher you're higher in the RPM, the back end of the Porsche is going to step out. You're going to get a little bit of lift off oversteer as you turn in. It's not horrible. It's actually it's it's actually nice. I, you saw I was trying to do that at the other end at the last corner. Um, you'll feel the back end step out a little bit as you go in. Um, again, you're going to be you're going to be feathering the throttle. It's it's pretty should be pretty easy to control and catch. Uh, and then getting the brakes, you might feel it again. The back end will want to step out to the left a little bit. Uh, again, I've not had a situation where this thing has spun around on me. So it's back's got a little bit of freedom to it, um, but it's it's very controllable. But in fourth gear. Um, you might feel the back step out a little bit as you turn in, as you're feathering it, depending on how how much you're coming off, how much steering you put in, how much you're coming off the throttle and going back on. Um, but again, as you're coming through here, you're probably still going to have some weight transfer. You're still going to be turning right, so you're still going to have some weight on the left left side of the of the Macan as you get to the brakes. So when you get to the braking here, you might feel the back end step out a little bit. Again, it's very mild. It's just, you'll just hear it in the back tires. It'll it'll just kind of step out a little bit, and then it should just straighten up and settle in. Um, just because that can happen, give yourself a little margin of error on with these uh, rumble strips on the left side. You don't want to. You're already kind of if the back end's already kind of a little bit loose as you're getting the braking. You don't want to then compound that by getting the left rear on on the rumble strips, where it's going to bounce it even more and, and possibly loosen it up. So fourth gear down to second. Um, this curbing, you can take a little bit of it. I, I try to stay off of it. I really don't like to, to you know, kind of buck the 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 right rears, uh, the right rear off that curbing. But you can. And it, a lot of times, if you eat the curbing, it, and it bounces the rear of the car, you know, off as you exit, as you're rolling back into the throttle, it it'll help rotate it a little bit. Um, I, I don't know if I'd want to do that consistently. Um, because you never know, especially in traffic. 
Um, second gear here. Again, this whole, these next couple of turns for me are all second gear. Quick dab of the brakes, turn in. Can use a bit of this curbing. Roll it out to here. I'll probably use a little bit of the curbing here. Uh, it's not as bad as the other straight. Um, let off the throttle, quick, maybe a quick break, turn in, eat a little bit of the curb, roll back in, extend out to the right side here, bring it back, and then the final corner, or the final two corners. Now what I'm trying to do here is, um, again for me on the controller, uh, what I'm trying to do is, I'm, I'm trying to release the throttle suddenly as I turn in, because I'm, I'm trying to induce a little bit of lift off oversteer uh, with the back of the the Macan, so that the 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 rear of the the rear kind of steps out to the left and kind of helps rotate through this kink. And if I'd done it right, puts me right on the right side of the track for the braking for the final corner. Doesn't always work that way, um, but it's it's right about the braking line. I kind of correlate it with where the 50 board is. If the 50 board gets taken out during the race, it's then usually let me move up here a little bit. You can kind of see that there's this light pole, you know, kind of right in the middle of the uh, of the rear view mirror. That pole is right about the same spot as the 50 boards. So if you kind of use that as reference as well, uh, if you lose track of the uh, if that if that 50 board goes bye bye. So, uh, so it's a it's a lift of the throttle here, and if I've done it right, the back end will step out a little bit. But I sh I'm trying to get the truck car truck what is it crossover man I start saying that i'm trying to get it to where it's about here straight heading into the braking zone for the final corner um sometimes i don't get it right and i'm a little bit further to the inside um if you're all the way to the inside it's going to make that last corner really tough uh getting a good exit out of um but again it's a it's a break 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 down to second gear this final corner, again, there's no inside curbing. It is just painted, so you can use a lot, you know, use as much as you dare. Um, but what I'm trying to do is as you get to the apex, if I've done it right, I'm rolling back out. I can be full throttle at this point out of the corner, and I just kind of let it go all the way out. I'll cross over here and take the wide exit out onto the front straight. So... Um, that final corner, I would expect, especially in traffic, there's going to be a lot of dive bombs in on the inside. Um, again, the way that exit is, it does, you know, it's a it's a tight entry, but it opens up on exit. So if you do get inside and you get pinched, you can just kind of keep it to the left and just follow the inside line out. And you'll probably be able to, to fight for a position down in the first corner. Uh, but we'll see how that goes in the, in the mock race. Um, but that's a lap here of of Yas, and I always forget if this is the, no, this is the South Circuit. So what we're going to do is let's uh, get out of, get out of test drive here and run a race. And so let's go to race setup because I want to adjust it down a little bit. Well, let's see. Um, let me do my math again. So again, we're doing the shorter races this, this season, so it's roughly... This is how I do it. I go, I, I know I ran about a 110. Um, so 110, that's 70 seconds. And a 35 minute race is about 2100 seconds. So 2100 seconds divided by, you know, average 70 seconds per lap, about 30 laps. So that, you might see that on Thursday, you might not. So it's going to be in and around there, depending on how, you know, Matt's, I think his calculations are a little more precise. I'm kind of winging it. Um, but usually I think I'm usually within a couple laps of what the race will actually be. But if you do a 30 lap practice, that's pretty close to what you, you'll probably see on Thursday. Um, I'm going to switch things up a little bit. Uh, again, with, with the, with the free play and trying to get competitive AI, I can't really find ours. You know, I want to do this with all Porsches and I really can't find, oh, wait a minute. Hello. Ah, all right. So I'm going to exit out really quick because this is one of the things that free play does that I don't like in the race setup. And it's, I have to go out to redo this. So I'm gonna switch things up. So I'm gonna do 30 laps of, of Yas Marino. I know I'm in, let me go down through here. It should be set to, 
Thank you for being a modern SUV. I would prefer to be in any. Thank you. So bucket one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch things up a little bit. So bucket one, we're doing A class, A class Porsches. And so that's that. It always resets that. I wish it wouldn't. Back in, all the way to Porsche. It'd be nice if there was a quicker way to get to that. Um, bucket two. So, so what I'm doing is uh, I'm, I'm switching this up a little bit. I'm going to send A class Porsches out in front, uh, and then. I'm actually going to start 50 seconds after them uh, in in my Macan. And then right behind me is starting five seconds behind me. I'm going to have six uh, S-Class Porsches. And... And Porsches. And then, and then starting very last, I'm going to have... I'm going to have a couple. I'm going to have six or uh, five car class Porsches. And I've got to reset them. Because um, I can't really find that it's, it's in trying to play around with different classes. It's like the I'm faster than the, the A class Porsches, um, but I'm not quicker than S or R, but there's nothing in between. So I, I, I can't find an. Uh, uh, any of these where, whoops, uh, where I can't find any of these where they're, um, where I've got a class that is running about my pace. It's either they're slower than me or they're faster than me. So I figure it all start kind of in the middle, middle of the, the mess here and maybe the opening lap. So I'm trying to, I'll get a little defensive practice with the AI. Um, and then maybe later in the race, then when we start catching the, the rest of the, the rest of the field, then we'll see where things shake out. Um, let's go ahead and load in here. And we'll just go ahead and get started in the race. And what will be, will be. So 30 laps, Gas Marina South Circuit. Uh, and just to alleviate any, any concerns, um, I think if, if, if the last group is starting uh, at, at 60 seconds, you're not going to have any issues. Um, you know, again, you know, if I'm, my, my fast lap is at a minute 10, and it might be a little bit lower, I think, once we're done with the race. But, you know, you, you know no worries about getting lapped on the start, and you should have plenty of time to get up to speed. So, uh, it's the same way for, um, for the other one as well. So it's going to be very short laps uh, this week for both courses. And so the goal here is how high up in the order can I finish? Can I get a podium? E. I'm not even going to pronounce the German name of that one. I got a bunch of 911s. Not the best start. For your outlap, you can break a little bit later. Obviously, you're not going to be going as quickly. See the back end got a little bit loose there. Use the rump strips there, but I'm going to stay off the off the butt here. Oh. straight is where I'm going to get eaten alive by the guys behind me. They get a good run out. Look at them catch me.
the only hope is that um, big vehicle that they can't find a way past. Probably be my last clean lap for a while. Where are we at? Ten three. I don't know why I keep shifting to fifth. I can leave it fourth there. And again, if you're feeling the back end stepping out and you you don't need to get to the brake, you know, give it a little bit of gas. Again, the same philosophy. The all-wheel drive, the front's going to kind of pull uh, pull the Porsche straight. One ten two. He's gone. I want to go a little defensive here. Again, this front straightaway is so wide, but I can put it about the middle of the track and confuse the AI. We're going to go for that. Ow, hello. Woo -hoo -hoo. AI needs to work on its situational awareness. <laughs> Like, you know, at least with the way the things are set. I go faster than that compared to GT in the corners. Just, I just don't have the straight line. Here comes the GT2 RS coming by. Thinking about it. A little defensive here. Maybe try and block the uh, pink pig. He's going to force it. Are you going to force it down the inside? Yes, you are. There. Oh, good. Finally, slower traffic. Maybe I can. I can get by this guy here. 
it should give me a chance to get some distance on. Faster guys. I don't know if I'm gonna get by him before the front screen. Let's go. Oh, it's a little wide. Yeah, so that's that is a tempting place to try and stick a pass. Uh, I've I've done it in the juke every now and then. Um, it's it's a high risk one. It's another one of those you can surprise somebody there, but just know that if you're going to stick your nose in and trying to try a lunge there at that corner, that you might get turned into, especially if they don't know that you're that you're going to try that. And Levin's holding up the uh, holding up the pack here. Outside of the crowd, leave me room. And I wasn't paying attention to how close that RSR was behind me. Had a little bit there. And that would be a big penalty right there. Inside here. Who's off? Oh, or what happened? better exit out of that corner. Slightly defensive, just put it in the middle. Let's give the oh, he's coming by on the outside. Bye bye. Right here. That's one thing going through those 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 left right combos. Just you're trying to figure out where you know if you're trying to set up a pass, just kinda of watch you know, watch watch what the guy in front of you is doing and if it looks like they're a little out of shape or a little off the ideal line, 
just make the adjustment and just kind of look for that crossover on the exit. Oh, second gear, what am I doing? I will expect a lot of pumping in that last corner. So it's going to come by, or no, that's the edge. Uh, I want to, I know your game, I want to put a little bit on the outside. Oh, that would have been a penalty. As with that. So yeah, I mean, you, you can definitely abuse those inside curbs through there. Just know that um, it'd be pretty easy to get penalties on them. And I can't remember uh, how bad the penalties are. Let my catch move to the final corner. Move by on the left side. Oh, nope. Hey, the snowman. I wonder if that's Stu. Is that really Stu in there? Alright, there you go. Have the inside. I'm going to repass you. The room, yep, still there. Nice that I haven't completely lost touch with the pink pig. gets any real clean air to work with but I'm afraid in the next couple of laps he's then going to be able to really stretch the lead out Ooh, that would have been that would have been a penalty across the inside he's just going to go outside and I'm going to get freight train Slightly defensive here, but he's just going to take me on the outside. No, maybe not. Whoa! Just lower cars a pick, maybe. Nope, he opens the door for the other guy. Hit at the end of lap 15. I 
the normal line piece. But there you go. Again, it's one of those. Uh, I'm just trying to hold off, hold them off as long as I can. Here. Turned in a little too early for that. It was best. You can kind of see how the back picks up a little bit there on the left side if you got on those rumble strips. Now, pit entry here is actually pretty easy. There and it'll catch you right as you go past the concrete wall. All right, so I got up to made my way up to tenth. I figure I'm probably gonna drop all the way back down to last, but then we'll see uh, see where we end up as uh, as the rest of the field pits. Short pit lane. Easy rejoin because you're on the almost on the racing line. I'm gonna break about 100. And so traffic, I'm gonna stay a little bit wide for the first part, but then I'll go back to the racing line for this little part. And we're back to racing. Seventeenth, that's not too bad. Crowders. Same situation here, so I'm going to back off a little bit early. A little room on the outside. He's there. Oh, that's a dirty lap, my friend. That's time penalty there. Oh, no. Yep, I'm going for it. There. So there. Ooh, and exit. Okay, now we're finally by. Thing is I just realized I still have a damage set to cosmetic, so I'm not going to get any read on fuel or tires, but I think we've we've learned that 
<laughs> it's not going to be an issue. So, you know, in that 15 to 25 minute window, just use your pit strategically. Uh, wait a minute. a little bit. I don't want to get my lap dirty. There's a 109. That was me definitely, you know, if you watch that again, you know, I purposely took the second part of that, the, that chicane a little wide because I was looking for that crossover on the exit to see if I could get it. So, something you might want to try, um, I mean, it, gradual will, you know, there's been several times late races here, This, is, especially this layout, where that's when, you know, Late in the race, I'm catching Bradger and trying to find a way by, and it's usually me trying stuff like that. Of like, okay, let me let me look for the crossovers. Damn it, he's you know he put the car right where I need where I don't need him to be. So just be mindful if you're going to try to set up a crossover. Um, you know, taking a look, just you know, be mindful of, of how close. Uh, other cars are behind you because it, you know you're trying to set that up you're opening yourself up to, be, uh, to get to have someone take a look uh, when you're ready to turn in that's a little wide You can cross over, you can get quite far over 
the, uh, the track limit there takes in that final corner before it dings you for for a track limit penalty. Transmission versus PDK. Hold that arse up for me a little bit there. Get some distance. practically almost four tires over and it's still not giving me a, a dirty lap penalty. Eighth place, seven laps to go. I'll go out, assuming with 43 seconds up, if that's not one of the, one of the R-Class cars that maybe he still turn in. I'm using a lot of curving through there. A little, little too much entry. I think I turned in a little bit earlier for that first corner than the than the line suggests. So just barely hear the the left the left rear starting to step out. Six. 
not sure if 108s are possible, but maybe maybe mid to low 109s bad for bucket five. not going to work. It might work when it's all Macans, but um, it looks tempting, but it's very high risk. Yeah, we'll just get out ahead of him. Okay, so I've got to get past fourth here as soon as possible. So I can get the Porsche behind me stuck trying to get around him. move almost kept it on the track you saw when I got hit I just kept my foot in it uh, just easier than trying to get to the brakes. Try and straighten it out there. Just I think then I'll have to look to see. I think the, the rear's overheated and then that's what had the car slide off on the left side. No, I'm not letting you buy it. Going full defense. Nope, I'm not going to be able to get on that. A little bit wide. Almost had a podium finish. Fourth. I got one lap and I got the RSR behind me. And I think he's now yeah, there. I don't think I'm gonna, unless it's the eight. Nope. Got the pace. You're good. We'll put it in the middle of the track. So, okay, so my quickest lap was a 109.6. Um, that's probably a good solid bucket five time as far as clean traffic, no, you know, clean air, no, no traffic. Um, but as you can see, you know, there's, once you get into traffic, it's very easy to get kind of bottled up in the, in the technical bits on, on each end of the track. So um, that is 
that's just kind of the track guide and what you might be able to expect with the with the Porsche Macan at Yas Marina South. Uh, I'm going to take a, I want to stop the stream here, take a little break, go check on laundry, and then I'll I'll come back and here in a little bit, and then we'll do uh, do the same thing for uh, Yas Marina North Corkscrew at night. So hope you guys are having a good weekend and happy racing. <laughs>